How's it going everybody, Stas here, and in today's video we're going to be doing an overall market update, breaking down the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, plus a bunch of stocks, a bunch of stocks that I'm watching and that I'm looking to trade here amidst one of the craziest stock markets in recent history. And I also want to go over some thoughts going through my head right now that are kind of allowing me to keep a level head through, again, one of the craziest markets that we've experienced in recent history, if not one of the most craziest ever, right? So all I ask from you guys, if you enjoy this video, as always, you know what to do. Hit that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. And I know I said that that Weeble, uh, what's it called, promotion was running out on the 17th, but... It didn't. It's still live, so I figured if it's still up, you guys can still get your free money. Why not let you all know? So down below in the description box, if you put in $100 into Webull, you get two free stocks valued up to get this $1,400. So go get your free money amidst this craziness. Who could not use a little bit of free money, right? And that is an affiliate link. Just so you guys know, I do get some kickback for that. But all the videos here are free of charge, so that is one way you guys can repay me. So let's just get right into it. Let's start off here with the S&P 500 like we always do. And we had another bloodbath today. Not as bad as we've seen other days where we've seen the S&P down 10%, 12%, but still... We were down 104 points today, down 4.34%. And one of the key levels in terms of the S&P here that I was watching today, and I'm sure many of you were watching it as well, was 2370 to around 2380. Take a look over the past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 days of trading. Take a look at how many times we've held that level as a Support. You can see it here once, here twice, three times, four times here, five, six. Today we actually held it once in the morning and then twice, so um, later in the day. So that means seven separate uh, separate times we've held this level. So for me in general here, for the S and P to continue its downtrend that it's been on, obviously for the past month at this point, you know, I needed to see it break that level, and that's kind of why you guys see once we did break that level, that's kind of where the majority of the selling kicked in for the market. You guys can see it perfectly. Once we broke 2370, we ran all the way down to 2300 in the matter of about an hour and a half to two hours. So again, that goes to show how quickly the sell-off dropped off from there and how strong of a support 2370 is. And if we take a look on this hourly chart, today's price action shows us that that 50 SMA is a rock hard resistance, right? And it's been one over the past couple of weeks as we've been selling off quite aggressively here in the market. So at this point, guys, next level of support that I'm looking at is going to be around $2,280 to about $2,300, which is right where we are right now because that is kind of where we bottomed out about two trading days ago. So on Monday, if these futures are red in, in the morning, right, and Sunday night if the futures are red, um, we can anticipate another massive leg down. Maybe not massive leg down. I might be exaggerating with my terminology there, but we may see another leg down of maybe 1%, 2%, which would really be the continuation of the downtrend here at uh, uh, a lower low, right? That would uh, mean the S&P made that lower low, which, again, that's the continuation of the downtrend. So the Dow Jones today down 930 13 points, 913 points, almost another 1,000 point red day for the Dow Jones, down 4.55%. And you guys can see here on the hourly chart, just like the S&P, we're continuing the downtrend because that 50 SMA rock 
hard resistance, right? And if we go over here to the daily chart, we can see the uh, the Dow Jones pretty much was downtrending the entire day ever since it hit that 20,500 level here. And let's take a look at that five day, five minute. Let's see what resistance we're dealing with now in the future. So this Monday, 18,900, 19,000 in general. That's the uh, level of support I'm watching for the Dow. I do expect another leg down if we break that level from a technical basis here. We may be getting closer and closer to that $15,000 Dow Jones, which I know a lot of you guys have been doing your research, looking at different opinions. A lot of people out there are saying 15000 is the lower end that the Dow Jones could get to. And guys, all these predictions, you have to take them with a grain of salt. You know this, or you should know this, because nobody can predict exactly what's going to happen. All we can do is make educated guesses, hypotheses based on factual information and kind of based on trends, right? That's kind of what we try and do here on this channel. And uh, that's kind of what I try to push to you guys, right? Take things with grains of salt, but still try and make um, educated uh, you know, decisions at the end of the day, right? So let's talk about the NASDAQ here, which down 4% on the day, actually the best performer out of the three major indexes, down 294 points. And as you guys can see, on this 20-day chart, downtrend is continuing that 50 SMA brick wall resistance here. And on the five-day, five-minute, we can see this level of support that we actually closed above for the NASDAQ being at around $7,000-ish, dollars $69.90 to about $7,000. So if we do gap down futures on Sunday night, Monday morning, things look bloody out there, which could very well happen, very volatile market out there, and we start to go down to 6800 and we break that, I would expect another leg down in the NASDAQ, whether it's a 1%, 2% leg down or maybe 5% if it does get way worse and way more volatile, right? And this is kind of how the market has been moving, guys. We've been seeing these leg downs. If you take a look at the chart, you can see it very clearly, right? We've been seeing these leg downs. We've been seeing points in time where we consolidate, we see a little bit of a bounce back, and then ultimately we see more leg downs. And that's kind of how we have to treat every single rally at this point until we get a full-on reversal in the market. And at that point, we're going to need to be trading close to 3000 I've already told you guys in this video, you know, in these videos, for the markets in terms of the S&P to fully reverse from a technical perspective, we're going to need to see, in my opinion at least, a drastic move obviously above this moving average on this 90-day uh, chart into the 2800s, uh, 2900s, and even $3,000 levels. You know, that is where I think, safely speaking, um, you know, the uh, uptrend in terms of the overall markets will be continuing, right? But until then, you know, we're still downtrending and it's very, very clear and shorting the rallies is still kind of the strategy um, for the time being that I'm personally using. And uh, that's how I've been making money throughout this whole crazy, crazy time period that we've been in. So let's talk about what I did today. But before we do, let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on this market? What are your thoughts on individual stocks? Do you think we have more downside in this market? Do you think that we have more upside from here? I would love to know. Let me know down below in the comments section as always. So for me today, guys, like I've been trading over the past couple of days, um, I've been trading this a lot. I traded SPXS, right? And do you remember what I said about five minutes ago in terms of that major resistance on the S&P? Well, that is what I waited for. I waited for that break. This morning, I was actually so close to taking an SPXS position, but we actually held it. We held that support at 2380 and we actually rallied a bit 
up to the resistance. And that's another thing you notice on the S&P. We're kind of trading, or we were, you know, prior to the last two hours of the market today, we were trading in this little range between 2370 and around 2450. So the fact that, you know, we held the support in the morning, I didn't take that SPXS position because you guys know SPXS is going up whenever the S&P is going down. So I need to see that full-on support break on the S&P for me to get into SPXS, right? So I didn't do it this morning. I didn't pull the trigger this morning. We saw the pop, but ultimately, back to what I said, you know, when the S&P broke the support um, at around 2 o'clock, 2.15, 2.30 p.m., that's where we saw the big slip up, and that is where I ended up getting into SPXS for a pretty quick move, and you guys can see it here, right? It was pretty much uptrending for the entire day. Yeah, you could have made a lot of money in SPXS by simply scalping it, getting in and out very quickly, or you could have held it for the whole day and made money, right? So for me, again, I I got in pretty much at around 2.30 on the S&P when we started to see that big dump off. And that correlated to SPXS being at around 23.79 when I got in. And it rallied quite quickly from there. You can see we dipped down a little bit. And then ultimately we spiked up to 24.50 where I set my limit order. Very quick, very easy. Not very easy, guys, because trading is not easy. I'm not here to uh, to just lie to you and, and try to set, you know, uh, what's the word? Put on a show that trading is easy, but it was an easier trade. It was a quick in and out trade, and uh, with how quick the markets were slipping, it uh, it made sense for me, right? So I got in, again, roughly uh, 2379 and out at 2450, which was a move that yielded roughly 3%. And uh, that's all I personally ended up doing today, right? And guys, one thing that you'll notice about these market ETFs, uh, SPXS, it moves a bit slower than TVIX. I've been getting that question, and it's because TVIX is more based correlated to the VIX, right? And the VIX, when it's it's volatile out there, the VIX has been moving 20, 30, 40 percent in uh in a day span, right? Which is why we've been seeing TVIX up a ridiculous amount, like 60, 70, 80 percent. So yeah, I could make more money trading TVIX, but you have to realize it's more risky, it's more volatile, and uh, trying to catch the moves is a bit more difficult, at least in my opinion and through my experience, than something such as an SPXS or, let's say, TQQQ, SQQQ, or whatever other leveraged ETF there is out there. Um, not every leveraged ETF, but the experience that I've had with the ones mentioned and the ones that I talk about here on the channel. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? Any moves, any trades that you made and thoughts in general going through your mind when it comes to your portfolio, guys, and your swing accounts, day accounts, whatever it may be. And um, yeah, let's talk about some stocks now and some ideas going through my head. And if you guys were in the Discord chat today, a lot of movement in there recently because of the craziness. People are conversing. Again, that is linked down below in the description box, 100% free of charge. You can talk to me and the entire community there throughout the day, pretty much every single day, right? I was talking in there about how I'm looking at potentially playing some puts. I'm thinking maybe on CCL. We saw a bit of a rally today um, on CCL, 20%. And actually, guys, they got halted because at one point they were up all the way to nearly $14 per share, up about 40% on the day there. And just a couple days ago, CCL was a stock that was priced at $7 per share. And, and that was literally just two days ago. So playing some options here, um, you know, for maybe a couple weeks out, maybe a month, two months out for obviously a lower price, strike price, maybe seven, eight bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. 
that is something that I am seriously considering because you have to realize, guys, a lot of these companies, and I talk about it on this channel a lot, many companies out there, they're likely going to go bankrupt and they're likely to lose a lot more in terms of their stock price. Some of those companies are CCL, you know, RCL, pretty much the whole entire cruise industry is screwed, right? Disney, although it's not a pure play cruise stock, obviously, um, they're still under a lot of pressure because they have a cruise business, right? They have parks that are shut down that comprise 30 to 40 percent of sales. So uh, a company like Disney, although I believe in it long term, this could be another one that I might buy some put options um, or put contracts on right to then hedge against my long term position and maybe buy more stock at a lower price. Because, again, like these carnivals, not carnival stocks, these uh, cruise line stocks. I can see more downside for Disney. Another one is Boeing. Obviously, Boeing is going through a crazy, crazy time period right now with everything going on with their company. Don't have to get too much into it because many of you guys know. And with the risk of bankruptcy, their stock could for sure go down another 10, 20, 30 percent. And this could be one that's also a put option candidate, right? And these airlines are, are as well. DAL, Delta, right? You know, Save, Spirit Airlines, American, right? And some of these companies you'll notice, especially if you dig deeper into the balance sheet, if you're looking into their numbers, you know, cash, everything, debt, assets, whatever, if you're looking through all the, the three main statements here, um, you'll notice how some of these stocks, some of these companies are way more loaded with debt. DAL back to Delta. This one, for my um, for my memory here, it's not as loaded on debt as let's say American Airlines. And for me, that makes American Airlines way more um, prone to shorting. You know, because more debt, more likely to go under bankruptcy, right? So that means more downside pressure, more likely downside pressure to the stock as opposed to DAL, which has more cash and less debt on the balance sheet from what I remember, right? So that's kind of some things going through my mind in terms of, uh, you know, maybe playing some puts on some of these companies that are likely to go bankrupt. You know, I'm looking at the ones that are most loaded with debt and kind of most under pressure. And, um, you know, that may sound like I'm preying on, you know, the downfall of companies. But when it comes down to investing, guys, trading, you have to take your emotions out of it. As harsh as that may sound, um, I'm not really thinking about, um, you know, you know, the, the human side of bankruptcy, losing jobs, when it comes to me making a, a, a put option investment or decision or whatever you want to call it and call it harsh guys. But that's the reality of the, of the, of the matter here. When you're making investment decisions, do not involve emotions that never, ever ends well. You either lose money, you allocate too much money because you're very excited to buy something, and then you end up getting wiped out. Either way, it's going to end bad. So for me, I put emotions on one side, and then I try to make logical decisions with my money with, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the most... Uh, the, the most probable situation in my uh, in the back of my mind, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking about. And uh, I'm sure many of you guys can agree at the end of the day. So some companies that have done quite well recently are Uber. And not because the business is booming or whatever, but the stock got a little too oversold. Uber was down to 1370. If you guys played this, let me know down below in the comments. But from 1370 it went all the way up to $24 so you could have nearly doubled your money in the span of 2 days 
excuse me, if you were to buy Uber stock at the bottom and just hold it, held it for two days. So Uber, what a crazy turnaround. And when it comes down to, I guess you can say, quote unquote, safer stocks, safer companies that may weather the storm through this financial crisis that we're in, some of the companies that I'm looking at, and many of you guys have been looking at these as well, are Facebook, you know, Facebook, and a lot of these internet companies, these uh, um, newer age, quote unquote, companies, you'll notice how they have a lot of cash on the balance sheet. Back to what I said with the airlines, they don't have a lot of cash on the balance sheet. And there's, there's some arguments that they misallocated their capital in terms of their share buybacks. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because these airlines over the past 10 years and they're in, in the bull market and many stocks out there, not stocks, companies, they've been buying back their own stock and kind of inflating the price. So instead of having that cash on the sideline to try and weather the storm, right, these airlines and a lot of companies, they've been buying back stock to push that price up. So in, in times of need, at the end of the day, they don't have that cash to kind of weather the storm and get them through it. So now they're relying on these bailouts. That is... um. Again, it's a funky spot to be in. And when we look at Facebook, some of these internet companies, they're the opposite. They actually, yeah, sure, some of them buy back stock. I'm not sure if Facebook has bought back stock recently, but they probably have. But they still have that cash, a lot of cash, that will help them get through the, the hard times, the tough times, right? Another company like this is Microsoft. Microsoft, right? And you'll notice a lot of these aren't as far down as the markets are in general. The markets are down like 30, 35%. Microsoft's down about 28% from peak to, to where we are right now. Apple, another one of those companies that has cash, although it was down 7% today, still it's it's in the range of roughly 30% down from peak to where we are right now. Another company is Google, guys, G-O-O-G. And if this one, I've said it before, if this one gets into the $800, $900 range with everything going on right now, um, I'm probably going to buy some Google. And again, they have a lot of cash and they, for sure, in my opinion at least, they can weather the storm, right? So those are a couple of newer age, um, not even newer age companies because they've been here a long time, but just companies in general, higher quality companies that can weather the storm. And at the end of the day, guys, you know, I'm watching a bunch of stocks. You know, we can talk all day. This is my active watch list right here. You know, some of the other main ones I'm watching are Walmart, Target, you know, J&J, &J, AMD, Microsoft. I just mentioned that one, NVIDIA. And I'm also in this time period... I'm also keeping an eye on gold. I'm also keeping an eye on crude oil and a bunch of ETFs and ETNs, leveraged inverse ETNs and ETFs that trade based upon gold, whether it's gold miners ETFs or silver, right? Crude oil, like the ones we've talked about before on this channel. You know, when it's difficult to find individual stocks to, to trade, a lot of the time I like you know, turning to, again, those ETFs and ETNs that trade on crude oil and so forth, right? So in general, like I've mentioned, I'm watching, you know, Drip. Drip is one I'm interested in trading. Um, this one was down 21 bucks today. And if you guys don't know, this goes up whenever XOP is going um, down. So if we see a big uh, leg down on XOP, Drip could be an option. DWT which goes up whenever crude oil is selling off. This is also an option that I'm personally watching. I'm also watching natural gas. At this point, I'm watching NGJ20, which are the April contracts here, the April futures. So, you know, DGAS at this point has been doing quite well, which goes up whenever natural gas is going down. So a play at this point could be like we've played in the past, We've played the rebounds of natural gas. So at this point, we're getting to oversold status, especially if we get down to 150. 
And in theory, if we do see a bounce back like we've seen many times in the past, we could end up trading UGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas is going up, and maybe pick up some shares at around, let's say, $22, maybe even $20. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. And overall, guys, in this time period, like I've been saying, the economy is shutting down pretty much. GDP growth for the, the the second quarter, JP Morgan's expecting it to be negative 14, 14% um, decline, which, those, I mean, honestly, guys, those are scary numbers. And all we can do at this point is work on our skills, as corny as that sounds, but try and work on our skills, try and develop a side hustle, try and, of course, work jobs if you're able to work your job. Unfortunately, if you got laid off, I, I'm really sorry about that. But, you know, there's 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 got to be some form of just, you know, just just working on improving, right? Working on improving and really just saving as much money as possible, right? Just saving as much money as possible because that is the dry powder at this point that you can use to either invest in an emergency fund, have money that can help you through the tough times, or you can pick up some quality companies at lower prices, especially if we get low, right? And way lower in terms of this market. Having that money just gives you the options, right? And um, again, I know some people are losing their jobs, which it sucks, but it's a reality that we have to go through, um, that some people do have to go through. And uh, we just have to keep on pushing, guys. That's the only way. Look at the bright side. Don't look at the negatives in situations. I know it's hard not to, but focus on the positives. And we're going to get through this at some point in time, whether it's a couple months, a couple weeks, whatever. We're going to get through it. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel, as always. And you can join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group. Link down below in the description box. And don't forget to claim your two free stocks from Webull valued up to $1,400. All you have to do is put in $100 into the account. And then you get those two free stocks. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Stay safe out there. Stay safe out there, guys. I hope you all have a great weekend and whatever activities you're participating in. And um, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.